In today's video, we're going to look at how to program a Lego robot that has four motors. Let's jump in. All right, now to program a robot with four wheels, you can't use these pink blocks because it can only controls two wheels at once. So to control all four wheels separately, we need to use the blue blocks to create motor blocks for each direction of travel. So to start with, let's get it to go forward. So to do that, we pull out set motor speed. I'll start at 75%. We're gonna duplicate it. We're gonna do the same for E. And then we're gonna duplicate it. And we're gonna change them to B and F and change the direction for the two wheels on the right hand side. So if I play that, you can see that goes, goes backwards. So what we have to do is change the direction. If I play that, and what we do is we turn that into a my block. So we go up here and click my block, we'll call it forward, drag it across, and that's our forward block. Now, when we wanna go forward, we just pull out the red forward block, and that will go forward for us. Okay, next, we wanna create a way to stop the robot. And I found an easy way is simply creating another my block, calling it stop, and all we do now is we drag out the stop motors. Duplicate, duplicate, duplicate. A, E, B and F. Let's say I wanna go forward for, I wanna go forward for three seconds and then I want the robot to stop. Let's try that out now. And it worked. Now we've got forwards, backwards is easy. So what we do is we go into a my block, we go backwards, we drag that across, duplicate the forward block, and then you just change the directions of the left wheels to go clockwise. And the, the wheels on the right hand side, we want to go anti-clockwise. We go backwards will be the same thing. Test it out. Excellent. Now, the question is, how do we get it to go a certain distance, then stop? So let's say we wanna go until we see black. So what we could do is when program starts, we wanna go forward. Then we wanna wait until our color sensor sees the color black black and then we want the robot to stop okay we'll test that out now excellent that works so what happens if we want to go until our eyes see something 10 centimeters away we could do the same thing bring do the weight until closer than 10 centimeters and then stop beautiful Next, how do we turn? Now, as you can see up here, when I roll, roll the motors, you can see that A is going negative, B is going positive, E is going negative or backwards, and F is going positive. So that tells us the left-hand wheels, which are plugged into A and E, We'll go the same direction as you can see here to go forward and B and F, if they spin the other way, since they're both going positively, you put them the same way to make them go the same direction. Now to turn, we want them all, we want the left wheels to be going one way and the right wheels to be going the other way. So let's try that out now. We are gonna duplicate this. And I'm just gonna change 
the left hand wheels to the same way as the right hand wheels. And let's see which way this turns. And that is turning left. So what we can do now is we can go to my block. We'll go left. Drag that out, drag that across. Now the trick is, how do you get it to stop? Let's say we're doing sumo and we want it to just go left for a little bit, drive forward, then turn right, just so you can hit your opponent side on. We need to, a way to stop the robot turning. First I'll show you how to use the number of rotations. Let's go down to more motors. Yeah. And we want to bring out the set relative position to zero. So how many degrees it spins during its run. Make sure it starts at zero. I'm going to use the B wheel. All right. So let's go left. We are going to go wait until our relative position of B, we said, is bigger than, there we go, 200 degrees, and then we want to stop. You can see up here, go to B, change that from position to relative position, and you can see it's, it's overshot it a little bit, but it's tried to act quite quickly after it hit 200. Make a my block, call it right, we duplicate this, we turn the directions the other way. Now we'll change the left to a right. Let's see what happens now when I press play. You can see the robot is not stopping. And as you can see, the number is getting smaller and smaller. All right, one solution for that is we can go into operators and we can pull out the absolute value off. So what that does is it ignores the negative sign of the B. So if it goes positive or negative, when it gets to 200, it will still stop. Perfect. All right, let's try another way. What's more accurate? Let's say I wanna do a perfect 90 degree turn. Let's take advantage of the gyro sensor that's built into the spike. So instead of stopping at 200 degrees, I'm going to change it to stopping when the yaw angle, we'll change that to yaw. Yaw is the amount it turns. So you can see I'm turning it to the right. It's getting bigger. Turning it to the left, it is getting smaller. Again, we have a problem with the negative yaw. So the left is negative, the right is positive. So to stop that negative problem, let's put it in the absolute angle. So it doesn't matter if it's negative or positive, if, as long as it's bigger than whatever degrees we say. Okay, 90 degrees and stop. It's just one thing we need to add before we start that to the left and right turn. We want to make sure we reset the yaw to zero each time this runs. So to do that, you go into the sensors and add the set yaw to zero in the right and in the left. Sometimes you need a delay because the robot doesn't stop in time, but let's just try it without the delay to start with. Okay, 90 degrees. 95 degrees. I'm going to press the robot and try it again. 94. One more time. Okay. So you can see on this surface, 95, 94, 94, just due to the size of the robot. So what we do to counter that is just take away the four or five. So I'm going to say 86 degrees is my 90 degree turn. Let's test it. Let's put that together with a really simple sumo program. Just the simple drive straight program that beginning teams might use. Start with the standard rule, which is a three second wait, which gives teams three seconds to get their legs out of the way so the robot doesn't attack. All right, for our drive straight, 
We want to wait three seconds and we want to go forward. Draft Stray is a simple program, but it's effective if your robot is bigger than the opposition. I tell my teams, if your robot's bigger, and stronger, has more pushing power, just use this Draft Stray program. You want to hit them and you want to push them off. We want to go forward. So we want to wait until our color senses white, or in this case, we'll do black. Once it senses black, we want to go backwards. Now, how long do we want to go backwards? I'm going to say about one rotation, maybe two. So backwards, wait until we've gone bigger than, remember it could be negative or positive. So I like just to use the absolute angle. We will find the relative position for backwards. Wait until the relative position of B is the motor we've been using, as you can see here, backwards. Oh, we don't have it. Let's put that in. Set relative position of B to zero, just so it resets. We might as well add it into the forward as well. So it's on all of them, I right, bring it back. So wait three seconds, we go forward. We wait until we see black. So we don't fall out when we detect that, we will back it up and we'll back it up to, I'm going to aim for about the middle of the sumo ring. So I'm going to estimate one, maybe two rotations just under. So 360 degrees is one rotation. I will go 700 degrees, just under two rotations. Once we go backwards, we then want to do maybe a left-hand spin and then we want to repeat that process. So I'm gonna put that in a forever loop. Okay, and I'm gonna download that to the robot. 